In this video, we're going to have a look at non-homogeneous second-order differential equations. So they are differential equations which are of the form a d2y by dx squared plus b dy by dx plus cy equals not zero but some function of x. So this function of x could be pretty much anything, but there's a few standard ones that you can expect to encounter in an exam. So let's first of all start this by means of an example. So take that one there, solve d2y by dx squared plus 6dy by dx plus 8y equals 4. So our function of x here, it's a very simple function of x that doesn't actually involve any x's, it's just a constant, so our f of x here is 4. Well just looking at this, we can see that one of the solutions just has to be y equals one half. The reason for that is if y equals a half, dy by dx equals zero and d2y by dx squared equals zero. So if we sub this in, get zero plus zero plus eight lots of a half equals four. So that indeed is a solution y equals one half. And that's really the essence of this. Somebody once just spotted what the solution could be for various different functions of x, proved retrospectively that these were solutions, then just created a standard table, which I'm going to present to you a little bit later, which you have to learn. So basically, the various different functions of x have different forms, and you've just got to learn the forms of the solutions. But the story we've given just now there with this example doesn't end there. Because we know that y equals a half is an example, but I'm sure you also agree that y equals a half plus zero is a solution. And that might seem like a daft thing to say, of course, if half is a solution, if we add nothing, that's a solution as well. But in all of our previous examples, we found solutions that equal zero. So the solution to the auxiliary equation equaling zero gives a zero solution. So if we solve, the auxiliary equation now and that is m squared plus 6m plus 8 equals 0 so the auxiliary equation is that I'm going to set it equal to 0 which gives m plus 4 m plus 2 equals 0 which implies that m equals minus 4 or minus 2 meaning that a solution to the auxiliary equation, i.e. a zero solution, is a e to the minus 4x plus b e to the minus 2x. And we know if we sub this into the original equation, we'll obtain zero, not four, but zero. So that means that whilst these aren't a solution on their own, if I delete that zero there, these can tag along for the ride because they contribute zero to the solution. If I sub in a e to the minus 4x into that equation, I get zero. If I sub this in to that equation, I get zero. And the half gives me the four. So actually, this bit here, this is the proper solution, or what we're going to call it the particular integral. And these just tag along for the ride. They complement the solutions so this is called the complementary function. And we abbreviate the particular integral as pi and the complementary function as cf. So now let's have a look at various things that f of x could be and the particular integrals that they lead to. So this is a table, unfortunately, that you've got to learn. So if f of x is the form c, then the particular integral is just a constant which is the form bx plus c, we'll just get it thrown back. Note that these constants here, lambda and mu, could be different to b and c. So we're seeing if it's of that form, then the particular integrals of that form. So, so far, we'll see that everything that f of x is also corresponds with what the particular integral is. That corresponds to that. Quadratic gives a particular integral as a quadratic. Exponential gives exponential. And this one here is probably the most confusing because a and b could equal zero so if it was just sine of omega x then we'd still get both 
signing cost terms here. So irrespective of what these constants are, whether it be zero or non-zero, we're always, for any one of these two trig functions, going to get a combination of both of them as a particular integral. So that's just something to watch out for. So let's now have a go at a question. So there's the question there. It says, find the general solution of that differential equation there. So first of all, step one will be to find the complementary function, which isn't itself a solution, as I've discovered before, but can tag along for the ride, contributing zero to the actual solution. So auxiliary equation, m squared minus 6m plus 8 equals zero, which implies m minus 4 m minus 2 equals 0, which implies m equals 4 or 2. Therefore, the complementary function is a e to the mx, when the first m was 4, so a e to the 4x plus b e to the mx, and in this case m was 2 as well, so a e to the 4x plus b e to the 2x is the complementary function. Step two is find the particular integral, and that involves this table here. So we can see that our f of x here was of the form e to the kx, i.e. where k equals three. So our particular integral must be a constant times that. So pi is y equals lambda e to the three x. Now, what we've got to do to find lambda is sub it back into the original equation. So to do that, we need dy by dx, which is 3 lambda e to the 3x, and d2y by dx squared, which is 9 lambda e to the 3x. So now let's sub it in to the original function. So d2y by dx squared is 9 lambda e to the 3x, 9 lambda e to the 3x minus 6 lots of dy by dx which is 6 lots of 3 lambda e to the 3x so that makes take 18 lambda e to the 3x then plus 8 lots of y so plus 8 lambda e to the 3x and we know that that equals the right hand side of the equation e to the 3x so let's now compare coefficients so here, the coefficient of e to the 3x on the left-hand side, so 9 lambda take 18 lambda plus 8 lambda. Well, 9 lambda take 18 lambda is minus 9 lambda plus 8 lambda is minus lambda is the coefficient on the left-hand side, and the coefficient on the right-hand side is 1. Therefore, we find that lambda equals minus 1. So the particular integral is y equals lambda e to the 3x, where lambda is minus 1. So y equals minus e to the 3x. So that itself is a solution. Notice I didn't put for the complementary function y equals, because y can't equal that on its own. If I sub this into the original equation, I'm going to get 0, not e to the 3x. Here, if I sub this in, and you can try that yourself, I will get e to the 3x if I sub this into the original. Then I will get the right-hand side of the original differential equation, which is e to the 3x. So this is the solution, and this complementary function can tag along with it, contributing 0, because each of these equals 0 when subbed into the original equation. So step 3, conclude with solution. So the solution to the whole question is y equals the particular integral, which we know is a solution to the equation on its own. Then this can tag along with it, plus a e to the power of 4x was our first element of the complementary function, plus b e to the power of 2x was the second element of the complementary function. So if we sub this into the original equation, this is going to give us the right-hand side, and these are going to contribute 0 because 
the equal zero when subbed in. So that there is the solution to the entire question. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.